In today's video, we will be diving into a key concept in structural engineering, how to decide the length of top and bottom extra bars in beams. Whether you are a civil engineer, a student or someone who is just curious, this video will simplify the process for you. In RCC beams, top extra bars are provided to handle areas of high stress. These bars help in resisting the negative moments developed in the beam. The SP34 codebook gives us guidelines on how to calculate the length and placement of these bars. The top extra bars are provided in areas where the beam experiences negative moments, usually near the supports. Negative moments cause the top of the beam to be in tension, so extra bars on the top are critical in resisting these forces. While bottom extra bars are added in areas where positive moments occur, typically added in the mid-span region of the beam. Here the bottom of the beam is in tension and extra bars are necessary to handle the load. Without these extra bars, the beam may not perform as required, leading to cracks or even failure in high stress regions. But in some beams, you don't need these extra bars and we will explain that in the later part of this video. Now let's get to the calculation part using the SP34 codebook. We will be using a two-span continuous beam as our example. According to SP34, extra bars must cover regions with high moments. For a continuous beam, negative moments occur over the supports, while positive moments occur at mid-spans. For top extra bars near the supports, SP34 recommends extending the bars beyond the supports by a distance of 0.25 times the effective span of the beam. This way the length of top extra bars at the end supports will be 1 by 4 times the effective span plus development length. And at the intermediate supports, you will need to extend these bars into the adjacent span to ensure that they cover the critical zone effectively. The length of top extra bars at intermediate supports will be 1 by 4 times effective span 1 plus 1 by 4 times effective span 2 plus thickness of intermediate support. For illustration, let's take the case of a 2 span continuous beam. Let L1 be the effective span 1, L2 be the effective span 2 and the thickness of intermediate support be equal to x. The length of top extra bars at the left hand support will be L1 by 4 plus development length and similarly the length of top extra bars at right hand support will be L2 by 4 plus development length. The length of top extra bar at the intermediate support will be equal to L1 by 4 plus L2 by 4 plus X. For bottom extra bars, SP34 suggests placing them in the mid span leaving a distance of 0.1 times the effective span from the center of the end support and 0.15 times the effective span from the center of the intermediate support to ensure that they handle the tension properly. This way the length of bottom extra bars for span L1 shall be equal to L1 minus 0.1 L1 minus 0.15 L1 and similarly for span L2 the length of bottom extra bars shall be equal to L2 minus 0.1 L2 minus 0.15 L2. In some beams, you might not need extra bars. For example, beams subjected to lower loads or designed for less critical structures may not require additional reinforcement beyond the main bars. In such beams, the area of reinforcement may be satisfied by the main bars only. If you want to master the structural design with practical real life project exposure, then you can enroll in our structural mastery course. And if you want to become a professional site engineer without going to the site that too at an affordable cost, then you can check out our professional site engineer course available on Civil Tutor app. The link of the courses will be given in the description box of this video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Civil Tutor for more informative videos.